let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think the first thing I want to do right now, welcome everyone. My name is Daniela Norvik. I'm going to be your uh, program coordinator for the summer. Um, everyone I, will meet me at some point um, in the summer. We also have on the call Evelyn and Amber, um, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves in a little bit, but I think let's just go ahead and dive into our um, overview. We have a lot to share with you, and of course, you know, we're going to try to break it down as much as we can, but it is a lot of information. So, you know, let's just go ahead and um, maybe work with that. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and my screen is going to be a little bit hectic, but uh, OK, but uh, just bear with me. Let's make sure everyone can see. All righty. OK, and we have budgeted lots of time for questions and everything else. So please, you know, at some point, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand and I'm going to have Evelyn um, help me out. And, you know, we can always take a little break in between the slides. If you have any pressing questions, if you don't want to forget them, uh, we can have um, your questions answered um, as we go through the presentation. But anyway, so welcome everyone. Like I said, my name is Daniela. Uh, I'm going to guide you guys through the pre departure orientation. Um, as you already know, this program is called Diplomacy and Peace, and all of you are going to be joining us from the US, and you guys are going to be coming from literally all parts of the US. I was looking at the list and I was so excited to see like so many pins uh, from literally all parts of um, all, all parts of America in general. <laughs> all right, um, so uh, first things first. Uh, this is the staff that we are going to be working with. We have um, Evelyn. She's our program um, director. She works at the center here in Tallinn. Um, Evelyn, do you want to just introduce yourself so everyone can see you and pin your screen? Yeah. <laughs> yes, hello, hello. I don't want to uh, spend much time because if you come here, I can properly introduce myself. But yes, I'm <laughs> Evelyn Morsep. I'm the center director. Really, really already want to see you in person. So welcome to Tallinn, welcome to Estonia. And yes, I have been uh, working for the CIE uh, uh, past two years. Before that, I worked for the government of Estonia for 15 years. So uh, yeah, this is my background. And again, I welcome you and uh, I would like to that uh, Daniela will continue and then the, um, the more important is the presentation she will give you today. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, and uh, my name is Daniela. I have lots of experience in teaching. I, most of my experience has been in higher education, so I've done lots of study abroad, uh, but mostly with college students. So you guys are going to be uh, joining me this summer and we also have Mari. I'm not sure if she's on the call, but um, you will definitely meet her this summer as well. All right, so um, I'm just going to have everyone. I'm pretty sure you have your phone nearby. There's no way you don't have your phone next to you. So let's go ahead and scan this QR code. And as I go through the presentation, maybe you guys can uh, try to um, answer some of the questions I have set up for you so that later on in the call, we can just kind of meet you and um, learn a little bit more about you. OK, so I'll give you a couple of seconds so you guys can um, scan this QR code. You can give me some thumbs up if you've managed scanning them so I can. Yay. All righty. <laughs> you need to do that. One more. It's just any phone will do It's It's. Alrighty, I think we can come back to the QR code in a little bit. If you didn't get a chance to scan it, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's just something fun we're wanting to do to break up the presentation later on so that it doesn't feel so long. All right. Um, okay, so a few things about Estonia. Um, I'm sure you guys have already done some of your homework and you've probably read a little bit about Estonia, but as you know, Estonia is a Baltic. Um, it is located near the Baltic Sea and it is bordering with Finland to the north, Sweden to the west, Latvia to the south, and of course, Lake Peipu. Peipu, Peipu. <laughs> I'm new to Estonia, so I'm like trying to learn all the pronunciations, but um, and Russia to the east. 
All right, we've got a few more people joining. Um, Estonia is, of course, a very, very small country. We have about 1.3 million uh, people, and it is basically similar to the size of a U.S. city like um, maybe Dallas or San Diego. Of course, it's a little bit bigger in scope, but um, in terms of how many people and how um, they're dispersed, it's it's a pretty small country in that regard. Um, the capital city is, of course, Tallinn, and the second largest city is Tartu. This is usually where um, all of the people from academia kind of like try to uh, hang out because one of their biggest universities, University of Tartu, is located there. Um, as you already might know a little bit about Estonia, Estonia is, of course, a very interesting country, has a deep history. Um, it also attracts a lot with its clean environment and diverse culture, and um, it has fantastic food, which you will discover this summer. Um, Estonia is known for its uh, digital society. Uh, basically, what people usually say here is that, you know, less hassle means time better spent. So if you can digitize it, if you can make it, you know, quick and easy and simple with the touch of your um, you know, fingerprints or with your phones or whatever that might be, uh, that's how it's going to be. So Estonia is one of those countries where um, they offer EU residencies, which is really cool. They were one of the very first countries to do this, and they're also one of the very first countries to also adopt um, online voting. All right. Um, a few other things about Tallinn. This is a little map we added of Tallinn um, to showcase the different districts. Um, we're going to be located in the Old Town area, so uh, right at the heart and the center of um, Tallinn. Uh, there are other uh, areas that we are also going to visit in Tallinn and a few other cities that we're going to visit outside of Tallinn, but this is the main area where we're actually going to be um, hanging out and this is where we're going to be um, uh, located for the majority of the program. Um, as we know, Tallinn is, um, like I said, the capital city, and it is um, actually, um, uh, this is where the majority of people kind of uh, live closer together. Everyone else in Estonia is kind of like separated uh, by quite a lot of, um, uh, they're kind of like um, dispersed in different parts of the, the country. But here in Tallinn, the population currently is um, a little bit short of uh, half a million. Uh, the, Estonia is also known for the highest number of startup companies um, per capita in Europe. Um, sometimes uh, people like to say here that Estonia is also the Silicon Valley of Europe uh, because of its supportive environment for tech um, entrepreneurs. Um, you may have heard of Skype, you may have heard of Wise, Bolt, um, there's so many other um, uh, big uh, player uh, entrepreneurs that come from Estonia, but these are one of a few of the more, more popular ones, I would say. Um, Estonia is also has the headquarters currently for the European Union's um, IT agency and the NATO cyber, uh, cybersecurity or the NATO Defense Center. Uh, Tallinn also has a very beautiful and a very unique old town, which is protected by UNESCO. This is actually where you guys are going to be um, housed in, and this is where your hotel is going to be located. Um, usually we say that, I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful area, you'll get to see it, but it is one of the best preserved medieval um, cities in Northern Europe. Um, and the last few things I want to say about Tallinn in general is that Tallinn is known for its cute and cozy cafes, which are located in stunning um, historical locations. Uh, we'll get to visit some of them um, together and some of them you'll actually get to explore on your own, which is pretty cool. All right, um, so the general information about, um, I would say, this call, it would be for us to try to review the documents that we're going to send you. And I will follow up with an email with you guys um, after this call to make sure that everyone gets to download, for example, um, the packing list. You get to download a few overview information, maybe about the program um, in general that we've prepared. So I'm going to follow up with a little um, uh, attachment list and you're welcome to print some of those um, items and review the things that we have planned for you. But this is our overview. And in terms of the daily schedule, I'd like to begin with the program in general um, by just kind of letting you know what the flow is going to be like. Of course, we have lots of things that are planned. Um, and every single day we're going to have um, a couple of visits, whether they are to government agencies or different organizations we have planned. Maybe they are some, maybe it's something fun that we get to do. Um, generally speaking, we will start with your mornings um, 
Um, we'll start your morning at the um, at the uh, hotel that you're going to, going to be staying at, which is called the Rixwell Hotel, and it's located in Viru, which is the very very um, center of Tallinn. Uh, basically in Old Town. Um, it's a beautiful hotel, very nice, very busy with lots of different shops and restaurants and cafes and all that kind of stuff. Um, your hotel will have lots of different amenities. Um, it will include free breakfast, which will have, it should have um, the basic continental style. It should be covered, but you know, it also will have, um, I'm pretty sure, um, fresh veggies and fresh, um, you know, fresh fruits and you know, different kinds of drinks and, of course, coffee and things like that, cold cuts. Um, there should be a warm meal as well in the mornings. Usually um, you can, you know, I'm pretty sure it's eggs or something like that. But um, in general, you will have breakfast provided. We will highly, highly encourage you to utilize this uh, free uh, amenity in a way. Um, it'll help you save a lot of money. And of course, um, it will kind of help you jumpstart with the day because we usually have a pretty packed ag agenda. You will have some free time, but I would not wait to get your breakfast until, you know, like 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. Because by then we would have already visited like two or three places or you would have had your class or whatever that might be. So uh, your mornings will have your breakfast and your class, which will be located at the hotel. Um, in the hotel, we'll have a meeting room, which once you guys arrive, we'll you know, show you around, we'll show you the lay of the land, and you'll get to see how convenient it's going to be. You can go to breakfast, and then from breakfast, you can go to your hotel uh, meeting room, and then you can get your class started there. Now, usually from the mornings, I will meet you guys right after that, and we will commute to our scheduled visit. A lot of the times, the commutes are going to be, maybe we'll do walking, maybe we'll do trams and buses. Uh, but you have to understand that you are located in the center of the city. So sometimes taking a bus will be like 15 minutes to the location, um, which will be option number one. And option number two would be to walk, which will be like, let's say, 30 minutes. Um, but it's a very congested area. So usually you can, you know, kind of we can decide based on the day whether we do like a 20 minute walk um, and kind of get to see the city. Or do we hop on the tram? Do we hop on the bus um, and take that option? Um, in the afternoons, you will have an opportunity to uh, get some lunch. I will provide you with a really awesome list of different cafes and restaurants, and I will try to explain. I'm working on that right now, but I'll try to explain what kind of food they typically have. Although you have to understand that in Estonia, pretty much everything's digital, so you can absolutely always count on the fact that the restaurant likely has its own website. So it'll be really easy to look it up and to see different kinds of dishes and what they offer but um, you will have an opportunity to get some lunch uh, and we will provide you with some uh, weekly stipends to cover um, some of that cost. Um, another thing in the afternoons, we will also have a cultural or co-curricular activity that will follow. Um, usually our kind of like important visits are going to be in, you know, uh, in the mornings and then the second part of the afternoon are going to be like the second tier uh, visits, uh, which are just as important, but you know it is something where you can maybe relax just a little bit. Uh, another thing you have to note in here is sometimes we'll have an optional activity later in the afternoon. Other times you will have some free time to um, uh, explore the city. Uh, it's a pretty safe area, I would say, but we'll get to that point in a little bit. And then towards the end, you'll have an opportunity to get some dinner. And then, of course, I'll go over the curfews um, and where, at what point you will need to get back to the hotel. On the weekdays, or sorry, on the weekends, we will have two excursions and we will also give you guys one free day. Um, and you'll be able to, of course, utilize it in whatever way you see fit, of course. Keeping in mind that every single one of these free times, lunches, dinners, um, all of these activities that we're going to be doing, you are going to be either with the group or you're going to be with your buddy system. Hopefully everyone knows what the buddy system is and how that works. But if you don't know, basically you will, we will pair you with a buddy from the group that is going to be arriving in Tallinn and you guys are going to stick together. So you should not and you will not be alone um, um, at all during this program. Okay, so how do we have a great experience? First thing is that you have to be open minded. You guys have to keep in mind that you are coming to a new place in a new country with uh, lots of different um, cultural differences. OK, people will speak different. People will maybe look different. People will behave differently. Um, you know, 
things will taste differently. So you just have to be open minded and you have to be willing to learn. Uh, we have a really, really awesome program planned for you guys, but you have to be prepared for a very packed schedule, which means that, uh, you know, we will have breaks in between. But generally speaking, you will need to uh, be up and ready and moving. The one thing we always say in Estonia is that, you know, being um, uh, being on time is super, super important. Uh, and uh, it is not appreciated when people are late. Um, so we will always try to be prepared for our scheduled visits and we will always try to arrive on time uh, to our next destination. Uh, a few things that I have experienced in the past with my students is that sometimes students forget to hydrate. And so in the packing list that I'm going to send you guys, uh, you will uh, prepare a few things that you should bring. For example, a tote uh, bag, maybe like a water bottle. Uh, maybe you can bring a little backpack or something like that. But the most important thing here is to have a few snack bars or have um, something that you can stay hydrated with. So eat healthy and stay staying hydrated. Don't forget to drink water. Don't forget to get a granola bar or something. If you feel like you're, you know, getting a lot of energy out and you're not supplementing that energy back with um, something else. Uh, of course, don't forget to rest. We will give you, uh, you know, free time. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you should once you get back to the hotel, just kind of like stay really, really late. So just, you know, go to bed at a reasonable time. Uh, we always say in Estonia that early is on time, on time is late, and late is just unacceptable. I learned this pretty early on in my uh, relationship. I'm married to an Estonian guy, so, you know, it's like, oh, we're three minutes late. I'm like, it's three minutes, it's okay. It's like, nope, it's not okay, it's unacceptable. <laughs> so uh, we're going to try to practice that as well. Uh, in Estonia, we also say that there is no bad weather, just bad choice of clothing, and uh, your packing list that I've prepared has all of that essential information. I'll go over the weather in a little bit, but it can be quite unpredictable, I would say. Alrighty, uh, so the most common challenges usually are that, um, well, the first thing usually is I just, you did not pack right. You don't have the right shoes. You don't have the right outfit. We're going to end up walking quite a bit and it's just going to be like, you know, what, you know, can we like slow it down? Can we pace ourselves? Yes, of course we can pace ourselves, but also we need to make sure that uh, we uh, come prepared. So again, going back to the packing list, super, super important. Please, once I send it out, you guys can, you should definitely download it and try to uh, check every single thing that I've um, added onto that list. Uh, please don't be surprised when it gets super windy. It might get rainy. Temperature Temperatures might drop to below 60. Um, yes, in the middle of the summer, it can still get pretty chilly and pretty cold. Uh, even right now, uh, we don't have um, fire here, but um, you know, I'm like, oh, it's a little chilly right now. So uh, it can get kind of like that in the summer too. So our weather can be quite unpredictable. Uh, sometimes we usually say that the challenges are also language barriers. You know, that could apply, of course, um, but I would say that, you know, it's, Definitely not going to be a huge issue for you guys in Estonia because most people speak at least two to three languages. So definitely, of course, Estonian, uh, English, most of the young people, I mean, pretty much everyone speaks um, English. I, you know, can always, I've never really had an instance where I haven't been able to communicate something that I wanted or needed. So you should feel pretty independent here. Um, people also speak um, Finnish and Russian. So, you know. There are lots of options um, as far as um, overcoming language barriers. Uh, customer service. Um, usually in Estonia, people can, are very direct, very honest, very straight to the point. You know, let's just you want this, this and this. There is no 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 sarcasm, no like hidden languages, no hidden cues. Um, you know, you don't have to uh, read too much into the body language. You know, they're not trying to be rude. It's just customary to not be nosy or overly chatty. So if you ask them a question, they will answer it um, as you asked it. But it's not very common to get like super friendly and like chatty and things like that. So you have to get to know the person first. Feeling homesick and struggling to keep up with the program is usually something that will come in pretty much for everyone. Um, and when that comes, when those days kind of come, uh, please reach out to us. This is why we're here. We will have a really nice team. You will have fantastic program leaders. I have already spoken to them. They're really awesome. You will have lots of support. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to your program leaders. We're here to support you. We're here to help you out. So please, please keep that in mind. 
Uh, what are some things you can get excited about? Uh, like I said, here's another QR code for anyone who's curious. OK, uh, you can get excited about lots of different things. You know, um, you are basically going to be staying in Europe's best preserved medieval old town. I mean, it's super cool. Um, you can scan the QR code and you can see some of the pictures that I've uploaded in this little scavenger hunt uh, that we prepared for you guys. You can also get excited about the fact that we're going to visit the parliament. We're also going to visit the president's office or president's palace in Kadri York City, in Kadri York Park. Uh, we're going to visit NATO's um, cybersecurity center, which is a pretty, pretty cool thing, right? That's the next level of um, kind of like diplomacy and how you can manage um, peace throughout the world, um, you know, is managing it through cybersecurity. We're also going to go to an adventure park. Uh, we can hike. We can have a little zipline adventure for anyone who is up for it, of course, when no one's going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. We are going to have two day trips in Hapsalu and Parnu. Uh, those are fantastic cities, one of the most beautiful cities to visit in Estonia in the summer, of course. It's just going to be really awesome. We're going to go as a group. Uh, we will also visit, visit many world recognized museums. We're going to go to the world, uh, to the um, uh, Seaplane Museum, uh, Harbor Museum, which is really awesome. It's open. It's kind of like a, a really cool dome structure that kind of sits on its own. It has a really cool architecture and history behind it. Uh, we're going to also have a scavenger hunt, like I said, and we're trying to We'll try to put some fun prizes in there. Like, let's see who's going to be able to complete it. Um, if you want a peek, like I said, scan the QR code and you can kind of scroll through your phone and check out the, the few sites that we have in mind. OK, so spending and budgeting. Uh, the, so cost of living in Estonia in general is usually dependent by depending on your lifestyle. Like, you know, how do you normally spend? What do you normally do? Or do you normally wake up in the morning and are you going to go to buy like a four euro coffee or are you going to go to the hotel where your breakfast is included and coffee is included? Like what kind of a lifestyle do you live? Are you going to spend five euros on a cup of coffee or are you going to just get the coffee that's in front of you and just use that coffee, right? So depending on the kind of lifestyle you live and how you, you know, how you choose to, mm, what kind of decisions you choose to make, um, I would say that Estonia can be a pretty friendly uh, to anyone who is budget conscious. I would say an average price for breakfast, maybe like four euros if you like get like a bagel or get like a croissant or something like that. Lunch, dinner, between six and 20 euros. Again, depending on what kind of food you like to buy, most of the food here is going to be super fresh. So be prepared for that. OK, um, you know, if you're lactose intolerant or something like that, please Bring some backup pills or something like that. OK, um, I would say other things like, you know, like if you really need to get a Bolt ride or Bolt is the equivalent, by the way, of an Uber ride or like if you need to get um, an additional taxi service for whatever reason. And of course, you're always going to be accompanied for something like that. We're not going to just let you, you know, get back to the hotel for whatever reason. Uh, but usually things like that are going to be pretty affordable, although I would say that for transportation, you're not really going to need this because we are going to give you a free um, uh, Tallinn city uh, transportation bus card. It's going to be loaded with money on it and you can get on any tram, any bus, uh, like any public service within Tallinn for free. So we're going to give you that. And so there should be absolutely no reason for you to be kind of like needing any sort of taxi or Uber ride service. Um, uh, as far as the um, getting from Tallinn city uh, to the airport, super close. We already have that planned. We're going to pick you guys up and we're going to bring you back to the hotel. It's a super close uh, distance because uh, basically the um, airport is located um, in the center of Tallinn and it should be to it's like 10 euros like Pretty affordable is my point. Um, again, what is included? Public transportation, bus cards are included. Your daily uh, breakfast is included. Your day trip snacks. We're going to try to bring some, you know, cool drinks like water or maybe like, I don't know, some snacks, snack bars and things like that. That's included. Um, there's always free Wi-Fi in pretty much all of the cafes and restaurants or public areas, even at bus stops and like um, malls and things like that. Um, it is very easy. I mean, I still have my US phone number, honestly, and even though we have an Estonian phone number, I 
can just use my US phone number because I can connect to the internet pretty much anywhere. Um, of course, sometimes you just have to ask for the password, but it is available. It's out there and it's pretty well connected country, I would say. So tips to stay on budget, leave your uh, pocket money for the very, very last week. Try not to indulge in buying lots of different things right away when you come. Okay, responsible spending also comes from the kinds of food you're going to be consuming. Of course, a lot of our program is going to be connected to food because you know you have to have healthy uh, meals. So I would say that this should not be very hard in Estonia. Uh, the food here is going to be super, um, it's going to be like um, super fresh, like I said already, and it's going to be very tasty. So finding or looking for junk food, you're going to have to put in some work if that makes sense, which is a good thing because we want to be responsible with your weekly stipends. We want to make sure that you guys eat healthy and feel refreshed and have lots of energy. And, uh, you know, I, I have no doubt that Tallinn and Estonia is going to deliver on that part. Staying hydrated, like I said, you know, bring your like water bottle and bring your tote bag because going to grocery stores and if you want to get some snacks or if you want to get some drinks for the room or for the for the day, um, you know, you're going to have to carry them around. And of course, um, plastic bags are, that's not a thing here. You just will have to pay for it. And, you know, a dollar after a dollar makes a big pile of dollars. So, you know, again, going back to that packing list, you'll have to read through it. Uh, again, leaving some souvenirs and gifts for the very last few days, you know, don't overextend yourself financially at the very beginning. And if you're ever in doubt, you know, we're here, we know the area, we know what's flexible we know how you can substitute and um, save some money so you know reach out to ask ask us and we will try to give you uh, reasonable answers currency and payments um, I use Apple Pay and my phone for pretty much everything here um, but uh, we will use I mean not we will use but uh, Europe uh, or Tallinn in general and Estonia is part of the European Union, it's part of Europe, so we all use the euro here, which right now, it keeps fluctuating, but right now one euro is equal to 1.6 US dollars. It's best to pay with a debit card than getting money out of an ATM. You can, I would say you can, you can bring some pocket money if you would like, and we can change them at the airport. There is lots of opportunities where you will let me know what you would like to do and how you would like to handle your payments. And we will try to help you out, whether it is exchanging money. Um, if you want to uh, take some money out of an ATM, uh, I would prefer that you let me know so that I can accompany you. We can find the time to do that. Um, if you already use your phone, if you have a smartphone, if you use Apple Pay, and, and if you're familiar with it and how it works, um, it should be fine. Like I use my Chase card everywhere here and it's, it's great. But again, uh, you can use your debit card and you can use your money however you think it's most reasonable. Uh, like I said, ATMs in general, I would prefer that you have somebody with you when you try to withdraw any money. Uh, please don't bring traveler's checks. And this is going to sound a little ignorant of me, but I don't even know what that is. But it is still something that we're supposed to tell you not to bring. <laughs> um, OK, so I would say bring uh, this is the recommended thing from everyone at CIE is that we tell them bring like 100 euros for emergencies. You just don't know what's going to happen. So just have them on the side, kind of like sitting there. Of course, you can always exchange them back and bring them back to home if you don't spend them. But that's always nice to have. Have a little bit of cash uh, with you so that you can kind of get yourself in and out of trouble, if you will. OK, uh, before you leave, please contact your bank and notify them that you are traveling uh, so that you don't uh, inquire any other additional fees. Or sometimes what they like to do is they'll like block your card because they'll see like lots of spending in a whole different country. And so, you know, we don't want you to feel uh, stressed out because your bank blocked your card. So just let them know in advance uh, that you are going to be traveling for extended period of time for you this will be three weeks three and i don't know 20 something days so please let them know okay here's the um, other portion that i already covered a little bit of so housing and transportation um your stay in tallinn uh, you you guys are going to be staying at the um, Riksvall viru hotel which is located in the old town in tallinn um in the center 
the location is, I mean, absolutely perfect. There are, like I said before, lots of different cafes and restaurants and lots of different popular landmarks where you can um, visit. You can also, um, there's lots of different um, stores where you can go and buy fr uh, fresh groceries. Maybe you wanted cereal and milk and maybe you wanted um, drinks or something like that, right? Um, snacks, things like that. Uh, lots of different uh, possibilities for you to kind of like um, be connected to the urban area and what you normally do and use on daily basis, even in the US. Uh, your hotel, like I said before, will have breakfast. They will have four different restaurants and cafes kind of like attached next to the next to the hotel. So if you're sometimes tired and you're like, OK, I just I don't have the energy to go out and scout and look for a restaurant or pick from the list. I'm just going to go downstairs in the lobby or I'm going to go to one of those other restaurants that are attached to the um, hotel and I'm just going to choose something from there. I'm going to order from there. So perfectly fine. The hotel also has a Turkish bath and of course it must have a Finnish sauna, right? <laughs> uh, saunas are everywhere here. That's like that's like a part of the culture in, in Estonia. Reception desk as per usual, 24 seven quiet hours, which is really important in Estonia. Everyone respects the law. Everyone respects the rules. And you'll see here even kids, you know, just super polite, super very much in order, but yes, quiet hours are going to be, be between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. and you should definitely respect that. Um, public transportation and the CIE Center. So we will be with you. I will be with you pretty much every single day. Uh, you will see me every single day. So if you have any questions or anything like that, it's something that's a little bit more complicated, something that your program leader cannot really assist you with, you will come to me. You will see me every day. You will have that opportunity. But in case you need to know, um, where the CAE Center is located. Our CAE Center is actually located on Narvamante uh, 29, which is inside of the Tallinn University uh, building. Uh, I would say that if you want to navigate uh, a lot of the program, and I will show you a daily schedule and how it will look like, uh, but in that daily schedule, I have used Google Maps for pretty much everything. So buses and trams and things like that, all of that is located and it'll give you a very, very precise and very secure and good instructions in terms of uh, where you need to go. Also, like I said before, in Estonia, everything's on time. So 99.8%, I checked this <laughs> statistics before, uh, on um, uh, basically everything is going to be accurate on time. Buses are going to come on time, trams are going to come on time, and they're going to leave on time. And if you're right there in front of it and the, the doors are closed, it's pointless for you to knock on it. They're not going to open. They're just going to continue. You're just going to wait for the next one. So that's just how things work here. Uh, Bolt is the equivalent to an Uber here or a Lyft that you have in the US. Um, it's very secure. Like I said before, you will use a buddy system for this service if you happen to need it, but you shouldn't. But it, if you do, this is what you should be uh, uh, in. You should be aware of. Um, and let's see what else. Um, health, safety and security in terms of this area. So there's lots to cover in this side as well. Um, I would say that generally speaking, Estonia is a very, very safe country. Tallinn is a very safe city. Of course, there's always odd things that might happen, things that, I don't know, you might hear on the news, but, um, you know, it's a very, very safe area. Um, CIE staff will be available for any kind of emergencies 24-7. You know, of course, you need to know that this is our entire purpose here is to make sure that this program runs extremely secure and extremely safe. And if that we can manage that, we won't run it. That's that is the goal. That is what CIE stands for. If it's not safe, if it's not good, if we can't manage it, if we can't make sure that it is uh, staying on track, then we're just not going to run it. Um, OK, but generally speaking, you will be sort of supported by CAE staff, both from the US and here uh, on site in, in Estonia. We will have a system for incident management to manage that. Uh, we already have some phone numbers, uh, not some, but all phone numbers in terms of emergencies and things like that. And if you are using a local um, a local SIM card, which we will provide for you, if you will let us know eventually, if you need that, then we will provide one for you. We will have means to communicate with you, whether it is using Wi-Fi and Internet or it is using, um, you know, your um, cell phones that you will have on hand or whether it is you using a SIM card. In either way, you will have a functioning phone that works and responds to all of our emergency action plans. 
uh, to make sure that all of you are supported in that regard. You will be notified immediately if there is something odd happening, something dangerous happening. If we have heard of something that has um, happened in the vicinity and we will notify you right away. You will hear from um, Evelyn or myself about something that happened in the area. So please don't worry about that. We also have plans in place which will be covered in extensive detail when you guys arrive because we will have two orientations uh, when you guys come to Tallinn. Uh, we will cover emergency action plans and you know god forbid anything in terms of sexual assault support programs all of that is going to be covered we also will have an automatic alert system for all of the parents who are listening next to your kiddos right there there is we will have at least one drill test okay so please don't be alarmed we have to have one drill test that means we'll send a text message or uh, to let to, to to kind of like alert everyone, make sure that everyone can respond. We need to test that, so please don't be alerted. It will say this is a drill, so just FYI, um, that will happen at one point. And let's see. Um, and by the way, Evelyn, if I'm missing something at some point, please feel free to jump in and let me know because you know I'm like I know we have a very specific agenda. We must cover all of this information, and it's just a lot. So I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything, and if I am. I'm hoping you guys are going to jump in and be like, OK, Daniela, take a break. We forgot to cover X, Y and Z. OK, anyhow. All right. Free time and curfew. This is probably something that your parents are going to want to really hear about. Um, all CIE programs will include periods of unsupervised time. OK, so you will have free time. However, this doesn't mean go out and do whatever you want whenever you want by yourself it's, it's it's a system right we have a system in place and if it cannot be followed if it cannot be um if it cannot be respected if you will uh then we will not have it again <laughs> so uh you must have a body system which means you can you know you'll meet lots of different friends it doesn't matter to us who your body is like we'll propose a body We'll give you a roommate or something like that. But you know, if if you really happen to like someone else and you want to hang out with this one person for tomorrow or whatever, that's that's fine. You can go and you can hang out with this one person. Uh, you may not, under any circumstances, leave Tallinn. Uh, you have to check in with us, uh, with your program leaders specifically, every two hours. Like if you're, let's say, if your free time is three and a half hours, after two hours you have to send a text message. You have to check in with your program leaders and let them know that you're safe, you're around, you're just grabbing a cup of coffee or something. OK, all right. Um, participants also are expected to comply with the program rules and the CAE Center guidelines. Uh, when you guys arrive at the on-site orientation, we will be reminding you again of the codes of conduct. In fact, I'm going to make you also read them all and sign them again. You have already read through a lot of it or you will right before you leave. But just to make sure that we also have that kind of agreement that, you know, we will have some rules in place. We are here to support you. We are here to make this program fun and, you know, completely just awesome for everyone in different ways. But we will have some rules in place and we need to make sure that they are um, followed and they're respected. OK. Um, Let's see what what else um, students have to have charged and connected cell phones. Um, and I promised to myself that I'm going to bring my little charger to show you, but it's basically a uh, remote charger. I carry it everywhere. I plug it into my phone and if my phone is running low on battery, I just kind of connect it to my phone. I can take my phone anywhere. Um, I charge it the night before, so I would highly, highly recommend if you have the means, if you already have something like this at home, uh, please bring it. Or if 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 you're able to invest into one of these, it, they're not very expensive. They're like ten, fifteen dollars on Amazon. You can buy one of those, and then um, you will make sure that you will always be charged and connected to your phone. Um, it'll be like an extension of your phone, if you will. Uh, I'm not telling you go buy anything specific. I'm just suggesting um, things that will make your lives easier, and of course, our lives much much easier. All right. Um, let's see. All CIE programs will have a curfew. Now, the one thing that's interesting about Estonia is that right now, let's see, uh, it is 8.40 and uh, it looks like it's 3 p.m. This means that um, basically 
days are going to be so long that losing track of time is going to be very, very easy to do. But you have to respect your uh, curfews. Right now we have them set for 9.30 on weekdays and uh, we can set 10 p.m. because the sunsets are going to be at 11.30 and midnight. So point being is be at the hotel at 9.30, okay? Just that that's my one thing. Um, and your program leaders are going to be reminding you, of course, that the summertime is a little bit different in Estonia. Uh, you're just going to have like lots of energy during the day, right? Uh, and a lot of that is powered by the fact that everyone's going to be out because I, I always say and I always joke that Estonians always go in hibernation during the winter. So when it's summertime, they're all out. Everyone's out. It's very vibrant. It's very, very interesting to be outside. But uh, losing track of time can be one of those um, things that you have to keep in mind. Okay. In terms of your personal safety and responsibility, I have lots of different links in here. All of this is going to be sent to you in that PDF that I mentioned earlier in your emails. And I would like to have you guys all um, read it in your free time. You are joining a peace and diplomacy program after all. So I'm hoping that you guys are responsible and you will follow my instructions and you will read my emails and uh, download the information that I'm going to be sending you. Uh, but here are a couple of ways that you can stay safe, of course. You can research your destination risks, you know, whatever that might be. Um, that you, Estonia, like I said already, it's a pretty safe country. I don't anticipate anything too different uh, in, term, in terms of like how you're going to be adjusting. The only thing is going to be that days are really long and I would say that it might rain and it might get cold. Um, so maybe leave your crop tops behind <laughs> or like just bring extra layers is my point. It it will be cold, okay? Um, the uh, Center for Disease Control, you can check out all of these links in here. Um, it'll give you information in terms of what all is uh, essential to know about Estonia. Um, other things are going to be that you must enroll in the Smart Traveler enrollment program, but you already know that. We're going to be sending you um, a lot of this information has already been, by the way, sent to your uh, parents or it has been uploaded on Canvas or um, it's going to be you're going to be looped in one way or another. But just to make sure that you are super secure in terms of the information, I will also be sending you uh, some of this information. And if you're already tired, you're like, I already know all of this. I get it, but just bear with us. We have to make sure you have all of this pretty partial information um, on hand. Okay, and um, other responsibilities uh, that you need to keep in mind um, in terms of staying safety. Uh, try to blend in whenever you can, however you can, of course. Uh, usually we say like dress and appearance would be one, but you know, people dress pretty casual in Estonia. Lots of sporty outfits, I would say, in the summers. We we walk a lot, so bring comfortable shoes. Don't bring new shoes. I've had so many students on study abroad that just bring their fanciest shoes or their newest shoes, and they have to break them in <laughs> during the program on the cobblestones in Europe. It's not going to work. Um, so anyhow, uh, bring comfortable shoes. Bring your sneakers. Bring your Skechers or Nikes and things like that. Uh, make sure you're comfortable. Uh, carry emergency contact numbers. What I would recommend is just in case your phone dies or you save them in here and people cannot access your phone and your emergency contact is here and I'm not around, um, I would say in your cover, like in your uh, phone cover, just go ahead and take a little piece of paper, fold it in half, and put it in the um, in the in the folder of in the care uh, can remember case <laughs> in the case of the phone phone case put it behind the phone case just so that it can be easily accessible. That's just one little trick that I've um, had all of my students do, um, even um, college students. So especially you guys um, definitely pick up on this one tip I'm suggesting. Um, be aware of your surroundings and just look aware in general. Again, you should not have any issues in Estonia. No one should be bothering you. But if someone is, you can just there should be lots of people around and you can just always let someone know that if you're feeling unsafe and you can reach out to us and you know we can help you out um, keep valuables close to you it is the summertime so there's going to be a lot of tourists if anything happens i would not think that it would be from an estonian person i would think it would be from a tourist or something like that but anyhow uh, keep your belongings next to you your your phones or like your wallets and things like that or your cameras if you're 
really into you, taking pictures and things like that, just keep it close to you. Respect the curfew. Don't go out alone. Uh, still, uh, you know, stay, um, stay on well-traveled roads. Uh, well-lit uh, main streets, although that should not be an issue here for us because the sun is going to be up until midnight, so you should be pretty good on, on light. In fact, you're going to be so sick of light, you're going to be like, okay, I just need nighttime. I just need to, like, proper night. <laughs> All right, and the last portion of your uh, safety and responsibility, uh, local exploration plans are uh, not to be done solo, like I said before, um, and such activities have to be done at least with one other student. Like I said, we will pair you with some students. Maybe it's going to be your roommate. Maybe it's going to be someone else. Um, everyone will have a buddy. You are welcome to switch buddies however you see fit, but you must always stick with your buddy and you have to check in every two hours. And yes, I know I sound like a broken record. Uh, right now repeating everything, but you just please keep that in mind and you will probably hear me say this like a million times more. Uh, okay, don't accept any rides from strangers or new acquaintances, you know, like just that's just a general rule. Um, it holds true here in Estonia as well. Avoid using um, ATMs. Um, night doesn't really apply here, but just in general, like don't don't flash money, like don't like, you know, have like your dollar bills or something like that and be like, oh, $20 to $30. 40, 50, whatever. Uh, try to be a little more, I don't know, secluded in that area. Uh, use trusted taxi services. Here, uh, Bolt is uh, fairly uh, used, fairly, I would say the most used um, service. It is the equivalent of, uh, of an Uber. Um, always write down the license numbers. If you absolutely must take one, and if you're with your buddy, you can share your rides with somebody somebody can track your rides but just before you get in just snap a picture and send it to your friend and i would say like um on your phone there's a option if you you know if you if you if, and this is only for an emergency we're not gonna be encouraging anyone to be taking ubers and bolts that's gonna be like a very specific scenario uh it, and if it comes down to that of course you're gonna have to ride with somebody you're gonna have to share your ride and we have to know um, exactly where you're headed at all times. Um, if God forbid this happens, but it might, we don't know. Like, uh, don't if you trying to if you're getting robbed or something, just don't resist. Just give them, give them your belong belongings. Okay, so that would be one thing. Assume that always, always assume that they're armed. Um, this should not be an issue, but then again, keep it in mind. Report all health, safety, and security events, no matter how minor. We, I, I, if you, if something's, I don't know, something bit you and it's itching you, and you're like, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. I need to know, even if it's the tiniest little thing. I want to make sure that we we keep an eye out on all of these little things that might turn into bigger things. So um, just keep that in mind. Everything that's happening, tell your program leaders. Um, they will vet a lot of this information and they will tell me if if it reaches a certain point. But still, keep me in the loop. I, I want to know what's happening. Respond to all emergency texts and messages. Again, parents, please make sure that it reads. This is a test. This is a drill. We have asked and we will check with the phone numbers and make sure we're sending them to the students phone numbers. But sometimes what happens is phone numbers switch. You know, there's lots of different forms you filled out and it is possible that you know, someone's phone number is going to be looped in in a drill and it's going to be in the middle of the night for you. And we apologize in advance for that, but it might happen. So just FYI, please read and make sure that it's a drill. Don't be alarmed. Don't freak out. Don't get a heart attack. OK, body systems, let your friends know where you are. Last few things in terms of safety in here. I understand I've been speaking a lot, I it, but, you know, it is important to cover all of this information. Uh, you will be briefed again. Uh, in depth on the health and the safety and the security during your orientation. When you arrive, we're going to be giving you out some forms to kind of read through and make sure you understand what all this means. Uh, regardless, don't go out on your first night. That's usually when most of the incidents happen when you travel abroad is during the first um, few days. So we're going to try and we're going to keep you close to us during those. It's just going to be like a little clingy uh, to you and make sure that you guys don't venture out on your own or do anything um anything that's you're not supposed to do um other things you're most likely to be jet lagged um so when you arrive uh, we have a very specific agenda planned 
uh, to make sure that you die, you don't uh, go to the uh, middle of the day. Because if you go to bed in the middle of the day, in the first day or two or so, you're going to be jet lagged for the rest of the week. So we're going to try to keep you awake for as long as we can. And yes, you're going to be very tired, probably going to be annoyed at us. But keep in mind that we're doing this for you so that you don't you beat jet lag. You're not jet lag. And I've done plenty of this to know that it actually works. And yes, you're going to be annoyed at us for the first day. But like, oh, why are they dragging me to this place? I, I don't have any energy, but we'll just hold you very closely so that you go to bed at a somewhat reasonable time so that you can um, not be jet lag for the rest of the week. All right. Um, Drink plenty of water and be ready for the program for the next next day. That's usually how this will go. Um, let's see. Um, program and cultural behavioral expectations. Um, of course, we know that this is the first time that you guys are going to be out and about and on your own uh, from in away from your parents for the very, very first time. So we are going to manage that with you. You're not going to be out there on your own. We are going to want to know what's happening and we're going to want to talk to you and we're going to ask you some questions and make sure everyone's doing well and things like that. Um, but there are going to be some behavioral expectations. We're going to expect you to, you know, to behave a certain way and we're going to expect you to be tolerant of others in the country you're going to be visiting in a certain way. OK, so again, the official language is Estonian here, but people speak Russian, Finnish, English, it, pretty much everything is translated in English here, unless you go like far out to like Setoma or something, um, which is like you're not going to go there. But still, um, that might be the one like very, very remote areas. Things might not be translated, but generally speaking, all websites, all kind of like public transport area, pretty much everything's translated in English. You should feel pretty independent. You can again Think about this, but we are expecting you guys to be very flexible with your not very, but reasonably flexible with your expectations. Flexibility and honesty are key. People in Estonia are very, very honest. They're very straightforward to the point um, and they um, will expect you to um, to behave a certain way, right? So uh, we're going to be visiting some important government agencies. Um, I would say, you know, try to think about these government agencies that we're going to be visiting and try to impress, maybe <laughs> put your best foot forward, right? We don't know, like maybe you're going to be the next huge senator in the US and these are connections you're going to value in the future and you're going to be able to rely back on them. So um, think about questions and how you can interact with the people in here. Uh, people in Estonia are very uh, keen on um, intellectual conversations. So um, do some research. Juggle down a few questions and uh, I promise you they will remember you if you ask them uh, if you ask them like some interesting questions about how does you know how does this work or how does how does this process go about you know things like that. OK, uh, like I said, Estonians are very modest and sometimes it may appear like they're downright downright uh, rude, but they're not. They're the most polite people, honestly, in my opinion, it just takes a little a little time to get to know them and they're just these vibrant individuals that uh you know you can have really meaningful and deep conversations with um tipping is casual but it's definitely not optional uh it's not something uh, sorry it's um it's it's casual and optional it's not unusual to leave when the service is great like if somebody really connected with you and you know they explained the meal and were really helpful like you know, I'll leave like a couple of euros um, on the table before I leave. Um, it's not a, it's not like the U.S. It's not like a mandatory thing. And it's, you know, it's just if you really had a wonderful experience, sure, 10 percent would be good. Like I wouldn't go beyond that. There's no need. Um, Estonians are also, um, I would say, very conscious about uh, preserving resources. And you will see that in your hotel rooms, in places you go to uh things estonia they i mean they just they will do anything and everything to preserve energy um trashing and littering is i mean you will get the the ugliest eyes i have never i've never seen i've never done anything like this but if you were to uh, witness something like that you will see everyone uh judging you and you know for for 
for not behaving and following the moral code when it comes to uh, resources and things like that. Um, you know, for example, in the hotel, they're probably going to say, like, just let us know when you need new towels. We're not going to come and do room service every single day because there's no need for something like that. Um, also, other things, uh, lots of walking, public transportation, things like that. I already covered that. Cobblestones, you're going to be located in uh, Old Town. So lots and lots and lots of cobblestones and steps. So just, again, going back to that packing list, please pack carefully and uh, cleverly. Uh, and again, Estonian's value of timeliness, which we already covered. OK, uh, CAE, alcohol and drug uh, policies, none of this is permitted. So it's that's the best way to summarize it. There are no exceptions whatsoever, just nothing. Zilch, nothing. <laughs> All right. Um, phone, internet, and communication. Again, I covered a lot of this already, but uh, for anyone who is looking deeper into all of this information, use your US phone if you would like to. I still use mine from the US. Um, I've been here for, I don't know, many months, and I haven't uh, changed anything because I have an uh, eSIM, but you have to check and make sure that your phone has that capability. So go to your settings and make sure you have that. Um, and if you don't, you will let us know. We will have another poll, another level of communication. You will let us know and we will provide you with a SIM card. Uh, make sure that your phone is unlocked. OK, so if your phone is on some kind of a plan, then you're not going to be able to take and change, you know, uh, SIM cards and things like that because your phone is locked. So. Please, please, please make sure that your phone either has an eSIM that you can manage an international plan or your phone is unlocked and you can manage a local um, SIM card. You can also purchase a very simple phone. I would just, you know, borrow a phone from somebody. Uh, but anyhow, just try to plan to keep your expenses to the bare minimum. And uh, trust me, if you do these little things, you will um, you will save lots of money and you won't uh, come across any unpleasant surprises. In terms of communication, uh, like I said here, uh, most of your communication is going to be supported by Internet. Uh, of course, you sh you know, you will definitely have to have other alternative ways to communicate. But generally speaking, like um, WhatsApp is the um, application uh, you should be using. And this is the application we're going to be using for a group chat. I'm going to set up a group chat for um, everyone and uh, you will um, you know, you will get updates on the daily agendas. You will get updates on things that are going to be happening the following day. Um, you know, any kind of phone calls that need to happen, I'm just going to ring you on WhatsApp. Um, and then if I can't reach you, then I'll ring you to the local phone that you have provided me with so that, you know, we can have that conversation. I will find you in a different alter alternative. Um, but yes, that we're going to be using WhatsApp. And of course, Please make sure you FaceTime your parents. Uh, there's no need to use landlines or use um, um, calling so that you save them money, save yourself money. Just connect to the Internet and just FaceTime them. Uh, find video services and video applications that you can use to talk to your parents so that uh, everyone stays on budget, right? And let's see. OK, the flow of communication. OK, uh, this is you. This is the student. You will have a program leader. Um, pretty much all first level communication will go to the program leader. And if something needs to be elevated, something needs to have our attention, our program leader, uh, your program leader will, will let us know. And then it'll go to uh, if we cannot resolve it, if the program leader cannot resolve it, if we cannot resolve it, see any stuff here and um, you know, in general, then we're going to go and uh, try to reach out to your parents. So parents, we are going to contact you only when absolutely necessary, because I mean, this is going to be a very busy uh, program, a very busy agenda. Uh, so we're going to try to resolve things internally uh, and when necessary, uh, we'll reach out to you. But this is the flow, the flow chart. This is how things are going to go. We're going to have the student, we're going to have the program leader, the CA staff, and then eventually the parent or the guardian. So uh, in terms of the WhatsApp group chat, um, why don't you guys type in in the chat how many of you already have the app? And if you do, uh, do you use it? Things like that. Um, 
let us know. But basically, this is what we're going to be using. I'll be, you know, reaching out to, I'll be adding and confirming your phone numbers uh, that um, we can make this group happen and this communication happen. A lot of this will be reaffirmed on day one when you come, but still, if you want to prepare, download the app, make sure you're kind of like ready and set to go. And other applications that are very um, helpful and useful to us are going to be Bolt. Um, this is the Uber equivalent in um, in Estonia. Uh, Bolt Food and Volt, so it's kind of like Uber Food, right? So these are the um, apps we use for food delivery. I use Google Maps for literally everything, even to see when the next bus is from point A to point B. Um, it, it works really great. And as far as that, um, communication, I talk to my parents, to my brothers, sisters, whoever, friends. I usually just use WhatsApp for all of that because it's um, free if you're using um, internet, of course. Um, and then, um, okay. And then last few things, um, legal guardians, parents, you will be notified, like I said before, in very specific, unique circumstances. So if it's a significant medical event, we will reach out to you. If it is a significant health or safety event, we will reach out to you. If it is something that we are unable to resolve on site, if it's a mental health concern, if it is anything that has to do with the health and the safety and the well-being of your child, we will reach out to you. Uh, all of that is going to be, uh, uh, all of those are going to be moments when you can expect to um, hear from us. If it is also a very disturbing behavior question uh, or uh, sorry, behavior concern. Uh, we will also reach out to you. Uh, we will need to let you know that something is happening and we are unable to resolve it. The code of conduct has been broken, things like that. All right, uh, we have come towards the very end of the presentation. Um, OK, so your packing list, weather, like I said, weather in Estonia is super unpredictable. I mean, um, you know, we don't know. It could be nice and sunny and beautiful, but it is a coastline. I forgot to mention that before. It is a coast. It's like, um, sorry, it's um, next to the sea, right? So we have that um, sea breeze from the Baltic Sea coming in, which means that um, when it rains, it, it, get, it gets windy, it gets like super cold. So um, always, you should always bring a layer with you, like a um, little jacket or like a little hoodie or something like that. Um, it will get chilly. So June, July and August, technically, technically, they're the warmest months, but you know, you never know. So <laughs> um, it can be beautiful midnight sunset, uh, but it can still be breezy. So um, average temperatures in the summers are between 20, cel uh, 20 Celsius or 68 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, uh, maximum of 30 Celsius, I would say, 86. Again, I'm, as you, can, you can see there's a pattern here. It runs on the colder side. Uh, light rains and cool weather is very possible. Definitely, definitely bring a rain jacket. I'm, I can guarantee you, you're going to be needing it. So just it, bring a rain jacket. <laughs> OK, this is your infamous packing list. This is something that I'm going to be sending uh, to you guys. If you want to download it right away, I think you can scan it right here and you can download it. If you're impatient, you really want to check it out and see it and have it on hand. Uh, these are things that you have to bring with you, your basics, your toiletries, your clothing and your footwear, uh, your documents and your electronics. <clears throat> I have added pretty much everything that I could think of. Uh, I have looked at past uh, study abroads I've, I've led, that I have planned, that I have, um, you know, been a part of. And these are all things that are super, super helpful. So go through this list before you leave and parents, make sure your parents, um, your your kids, make sure you print print this out for them and have them check mark whether it's needed and packed or if it's not, because I can guarantee you they're going to save a lot of money. And they're going to feel much better because they have their favorite deodorant or they have their favorite uh, hoodie or they have their favorite visor or something like that or sunscreen. You know, sometimes brands are different here, so maybe they won't like the sunscreen brands here. I don't know. My point is uh, to save to save um, everyone's energy and money, uh, go through this list and make sure that you pack properly. One thing I would say is um, make sure you have at least one formal um, attire because you know you don't want to meet the MPs and you know go to the president's palace in like a super super casual attire. Have like something 
decent, I would say. So like smart, I, I, I say smart casual. So like a pair of jeans or like a pair of slacks with a nice shirt, right? Uh, nothing too revealing or exposing or vice versa. Um, so just have one outfit that you can kind of rely on for your super important uh, visits to these government uh, agencies. And as far as documents and essentials, um, I will follow up in the email. This will be in the email. What kind of plugs you need to bring, what we recommend. Um, also, it's very nice to have like uh, photocopies of your passport, uh, colorful photocopies, just in case in the event that you lose something, right? So something happens. Uh, print also your CAE confirmation enrollment letter, um, the guide that I'm going to be sending you, your iNext um, card, just have a little folder with all of these like little documents print them all out lay them out in a nice little doc in a nice little folder and have them with you you're probably not going to need any of this but still have them with you they will help you out a lot uh refillable water bottle a tote bag when you go grocery shopping because you're not gonna no one's gonna be bagging anything here no one's gonna be giving you plastic bags that's just not gonna happen and for every single um uh, brown bag that you have you have to pay extra money so yeah. Come prepared. Do you have enough in your medication? Make sure you, if you're taking medication, make sure this is filled in the US. Here, if you need any medication, even if it is anti anxiety or something, uh, you will need to go to a psychiatry first before you get anything. No one's gonna no one's gonna give you any any medication here. So um, make sure you bring or like laxatives or something like that. You know, sometimes you know brands are different, you know. Uh, so make sure you bring like your laxatives if you're intolerant um, or I don't know, little things like that. And all of this is listed in your um, uh, pre-departure packing list. So I'm going to have you follow it and check it out. And let's see what else. Um, if you're currently seeing a therapist, please make a plan with them. Maybe you need to tune in with them every now and then. Maybe you need to have a conversation with them just to, you know, it is going to be not just physically, but also mentally uh, challenging to keep up with all of these things we have going on. We're here to help you, but again, I'm not sure what the situation and the setup is for everyone on their daily basis. So this is just something we are letting you know. How can you go through a worry-free program? What can you do here? Oh yes, and I forgot to mention in here, uh, in case of lost bag uh, luggage, this can happen. Um, make sure you have packed in your carry-on like just essentials for the first few days, okay? So like socks and underpants and things like that. Uh, just in case, you know, your luggage gets lost, bring your medication also, uh, essential medication with you. And don't put it in your check bag. Okay, I think I'm going to shut up right now because I would like to uh, go over some frequently asked questions and open kind of like the lay of the land for you guys to ask any questions, you know, things like, do you have a curfew? And I can go over these three slides here that I have prepared for you. Yes, you have a curfew, uh, you know, like technical equipment, which I already covered. Um, is it easy to visit a doctor? Things like that. Can I save any money? And these are a few slides that I'm going to uh, cover um, and send in your email packing list, but I just want to make sure I leave enough time for questions. So I'm going to pause my uh, screen share right here and I'm going to come back to how do we stay connected and how do we continue being connected. Uh, but first, I would like to just take a little break so that we can um, answer questions. I'm sorry, I know it's a lot of information and, and hopefully everyone's like still up and awake and I have my cup of coffee here, so, uh, but still, you know, please ask me any questions. Parents, maybe you would like to go first. Um, I don't know, we, in whatever order. And I'm going to set up uh, the, um, while we're getting some questions, I'm going to set up your um, uh, QR codes from earlier that I wanted to share. Maybe we can continue with our polling. All right, so here I can go back to my little scanning thing. Everyone's super quiet. Okay, if you if you're quiet, that's okay. I can go back to my um to my. I just uh, Daniela, I just wanted please. to say that uh, <laughs> yeah, like uh, thank you so much. I mean, like you you have to take uh 
sip of water or something like that because I already you know, <laughs> had a, yeah so so yeah we we had a like small chat also in a chatting room I mean like uh, some questions okay. uh, were asked there and I tried to answer uh, oh, uh, for, for these and also uh, also uh, Amber but uh, yeah well, if you still have questions you can like uh, type them uh, to chat you can ask directly now but you can also leave uh, like send later your questions I mean uh, our co our contact information is available Daniela will send you uh, some information in so if you have yes. questions then you can also send the questions by email yes and I'm already receiving the responses here from my fr I forgot that I need to flip the slides so you guys can answer some of these other things but there's so many wonderful responses in here everyone's like really chatty and really excited uh for different things uh in in time and they're all like coming from all of these different places which is really cool we have like literally i don't know it's it's a really fun diverse group i think you guys are really gonna enjoy being here uh so so many fun facts too <laughs> oh my goodness um yeah Yes, I, I I just saw uh, uh, David's one. David uh, is yeah. one of our program leader, and uh, he is also in in our uh, today's meeting. So welcome uh, oh, now now welcome David also. <laughs> but yeah, in general hi. we have two program. Uh, hi, we have two program leaders. One oh is for one, first group, and then the second is for the second group. But uh, David David is for for first group, and uh, Daniela is our CIEE staff. So we will have a program leader and also Daniela as the program coordinator during uh, your program so yeah and also I me and that... Mari my other colleague we are available <laughs> to all this summer yes of course you're gonna have lots of support by the way I was gonna say look at all these fun uh, responses like uh, Larkin for example you and Chad can have um, you know wonderful conversations about how you like to hike you know Chad has climbed the mountain you know tallest mountain in in, in Maine and Larkin has climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, which is really cool. Like, look at all these fun responses. You know, we have like so many cool things that, uh, like someone has gone sledding in, in Finland. I can't promise that we're gonna have summer uh, snow this summer, but you know, you never know, so. <laughs> uh, let's see this other response that I got in here, by the way. And what are you most excited about? There's lots of different um, things that you guys are excited about. So many of you, are expecting to see all the beautiful nature in Estonia. You're expecting to learn so much about the advanced e-government infrastructure. There's a lot of you that want, it's kind of, it keeps shifting back and forth. Um, the vibrant startup ecosystem, enjoying Old Town. This is super fun. Uh, we also have um, different words. I added this little question because I, I just want, I'm very curious to see what how the group is feeling about coming you know to Estonia and just your first study abroad experience in general like are you excited are you nervous you're curious it's interesting it's just like all these things that uh you know you're probably running through your head um but there's so many questions that are <laughs> this is so much fun let's see if I can go back here and get a few more answers here we're enthusiastic we're curious we're interested of course, someone's nervous, totally normal, by the way. I mean, you know, just thinking about the scope of the program, and this is not something that you're just going to be in and out. You're going to be here with us for like 20 something days. So it's it's totally, uh, you know, expected of you to have all of these mixed feelings. Uh, lots of different responses. By the way, I was going to say this is your scavenger hunt. And if any of you had already scanned that and I can go back and add these uh, QR codes into your emails, of course, but this is going to be your scavenger hunt that I prepared for you guys. And uh, it's just going to be one way. We're going to be going to all of these sites. So we were thinking that, you know, why not have you uh, participate in in a little bit of a um, kind of like a, a, strike a pose moment okay so like your favorite old town moment or your favorite tompea moment or you know find this place this graffiti which everyone likes to take pictures next to it um you know find the uh cathedral in the in the middle of the old town right different medieval moments i was here last um last weekend and i was walking around and it was just so beautiful with the weather and the sunsets and i was like oh my goodness we just they're going to be so excited. Find your like cutest and most favorite like cafe moment, for example, you know, snap a picture of it. But these are a few things we have planned for you guys. And we're really hoping that, um, you know, you'll take advantage of them. 
uh, going back to our uh, frequently asked questions, since we, you know, you guys have had an opportunity to chat in the in the chat box in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover a few of them anyway in here, I guess. Do you have a curfew? Yes, of course you're gonna have a curfew. You're gonna hear me and everyone else reminding you of this curfew to the point of like, oh my gosh, we get it, <laughs> we understand. Um, let's see what else I want to tell you here. Um, shop for clothing, and I mean, just like any other advanced European country, Estonia, just all the Zara's and H and M's of the world, you can find them. Uh, so there should be no issue to, in terms of getting your basics that maybe you spilled something and you're just no longer usable right uh you need to get something new you can let us know we can give you recommendations of how you can get that where you can get the cheapest option and things like that easy to visit a doctor for any kind of visit to a doctor you, we're probably going to need a reason for it you're probably going to come with me for something like this and god forbid you know if it has to happen it can be quick and easy it, it'll be, it'll happen. You know, we have all of those contacts and all of those measures in place. Uh, different ways you can save money. You know, obviously try not to spend them on a morning coffee when morning coffee is available in the hotel for free <laughs> with a very nice um, uh, coffee machine that can, yes, it can steam the milk. I've had that question so many times. Like, ah, I take my coffee. It has to have the steam milk, like a warm milk. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I understand. But still lots of different ways you can, uh, find ways to um, maybe you can go to Maxima or Little, or you can go to Selver. Uh, these are all like grocery stores in here and you can get some fresh veggies, right? Um, or fruits or something like that, that you can use as snacks. Um, other things that are usually popular in Estonia, vegan, vegetarian, gluten free. Yes, it's very up to too many options. I would say like um, anywhere you go, you, if you communicate, I would like it to not I would like it to be fully vegan or fully vegetarian. Um, even if the restaurant is not vegetarian, they can accommodate. They will understand and they will be able to deliver on that. And of course, my contact information, this is all going to be added in that packet list that I'm going to send to you. You will have my information. You will have my local phone number, my WhatsApp uh, phone number, my US phone number. This is all going to be added for you guys in there. And um, these are just some slides from CAE that we have received that we would like to let you know that if you'd like to start following them and start uh, getting engaged with this global CAE network, uh, this is something you can also do. Um, uh, different ways to participate and get excited even before the program. Like you don't have to wait for the program to start and then be overwhelmed with all of these things that are happening. You can be excited now. You can follow that scavenger hunt blog and read through the information. You can download my email with the information and, and go through the packing list. You can get connected with CIE and see how um, you can be engaged. And you can think about your outfit, your school spirit outfit. They have this really fun uh, program right now, the CAE uh, Global Navigators um, program that are you know running uh, the um, they're running the the social media platforms i wanted to say they have this like uh spirit week maybe you can think about an outfit or i've had like me and my friend from i used to go um used to go i went to the university of arkansas so we would bring our little uh, hogs our little pig hog uh with us everywhere we went and we would just put the two little hogs uh, on the main landmark and we would snap our picture like that and that would be our school spirit picture it wouldn't necessarily be us it would be our little mascot <laughs> uh, so that's something you can do and you can see in here i was definitely biased with my colorado state and my arkansas hats but you know you can bring your own school spirits it can, it can be a hat it can be a you know hoodie or something like that and of course if you refer friends i think everyone knows this if you are subscribed to any cie stuff i'm sure you know this kind of information but you can share the program you can i don't know earn prizes things like that so uh, let's see. Mm, I don't know what else I can go over. Maybe some other questions. Maybe some. Who is going to be the bravest? Who's going to ask me a question? Even if I covered it, you can ask me a question. Oh, here. Tyler, how about you? Uh, on the website, it said we might visit Curacao Castle. Is that not happening? Or I didn't see it on the excursions, but is that happening? I'm sorry, which castle? Uh, Evelyn, did you hear that? I think it's it's the one on the island. 
we're not going to be going to the islands. I think that's for the semester. It, the, the islands, here's the thing. I'm currently on one of the islands and they are very popular in the summer. It is very difficult to access them. Uh, I mean, not difficult. It is easy, but it's 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 a quite a trip. It's really far, so I, we're not going to be going there, but we're going to be going to Hapsalu, which is very close to one of the islands, and it will feel like an island because it is surrounded by water. Uh, we're also going to be going to Parnu, which is another popular hotspot in the summer. So we will um, we're going to be going to those two places. Thank you. Yes, and if I, if I can just uh, add, then yes, uh, in one point we we had a plan to go to the uh, Sarema Island, and there is mm -hmm. a Kura Sara Castle. I think you yes, mentioned that. I'm... So it takes like we we started to calculate how much time it takes. And actually, uh, it takes more than uh, a one full day to mm. go there. But mm -hmm. as we are not allowed uh, with you to go to the overnight trip and we only have the day trips with you, we decided to split uh, that and yeah. just go to the, as, um, sorry, the Hapsalu. But in Hapsalu, mm -hmm. we also have really old castle and, and mm -hmm. we can visit that area also. Yeah. So, yes, um, uh, even with uh, our uh, current um, semester students, we decided not to go there. It, it takes like a little bit too much because we have to use a ferry. The ferry takes uh, time, the bus takes time, and then it, it's, so, it's lots of traveling to just to this destination. But then we don't have in, enough yeah. time to spend there and we have to come back already. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, so sorry. Funny thing. But other places are nice also. <laughs> yeah, here's a funny thing. I've actually, this is, I'm literally in the islands right now. I was hoping to come back home right on time and I couldn't because the ferry was so full. The queue was so long. So I just had to stop in the middle of the way. So I'm like doing the call from a family, a family's house. Um, but uh, it, it, I did not expect it to take that long. Uh, and uh, we got stuck on the islands uh, because you will have to take a bus and the bus will go on the ferry and the ferry will take us across and then the bus will have to take us, which is another hour away. This is not a normal island. You won't feel like an island. It's b very big. It's um, bigger than, uh, it's like two Kauai. If you've been on uh, the U.S. islands, it's like two Kauai islands, very big. From one side to the other side, it's like two hours away. <laughs> Other questions. See, I like this kind of thing. Let's let's talk about different things, different expectations, different. I don't know. Maybe anything you have in mind. I want to get to know you. So, ask me about whatever you want to ask me about. What is the oldest church in uh, the city? Uh, yes, we're gonna definitely be visiting. You're gonna be staying very close to it in uh, in Tompia. Uh, so it, at one point it was also the tallest church in in Estonia too, and we'll um, we'll we'll have an opportunity to go around it to visit it. You guys can go inside uh, inside of the church too, and it's a beautiful sight. Uh, if you were paying attention on the pictures, uh, you have noticed that I've added it pretty much on all of the all of the slides anywhere I can because it's such a beautiful sight, and it will be like a backyard view for you. You will be able to see it from your hotel, and it's going to be beautiful. So we're definitely going to be visiting. We're going to be walking around it. So other questions, please ask me anything, anything I can answer. Packing lists and should I bring this? Should I bring that? I have done this too many times, so I can probably be very helpful. Um, Ava, do you have a question? I'm, I don't hear uh, Ava. Do yeah, you hear I don't hear Ava? you, Ava. Maybe Ava, we don't hear you. I'm sorry. No. Maybe you can just now. Now you're muted. Yeah, we see the the, the muted yeah, mark. Yeah, you're trying to connect. Even, Feel free to interrupt us at any point. You get connected. Yes. No, we don't. We don't hear you. You can put your question to chat. I don't know why we don't hear you, but we don't. Amber, thank you so much, by the way, for answering all these questions. I would not be able to keep up on it. <laughs> You're welcome. I love all the questions and curiosity here. Yay, that's good. It's yeah. an active group. That's what I want to hear because uh, yeah. you know, I have a lot of energy and I've been told my energy is very difficult to match. So I'm hoping that all of you will eventually match my energy. So. <laughs> <laughs>
any other questions I can help you guys and help you understand more about the program, any safety tips? Um, any of the parents, if you guys are worried about something, like ask me, I can I can try to put you at ease, if you will. One way I can put you to ease is, uh, like I said before, I've done the study abroad programs um, for college students in the US. I used to teach in the US um, at uh, University of South Carolina. I was there for five years. So I've done like lots of domestic study abroad programs in New York and um, I, in Chicago and LA at one point. And um, I've also done the European study abroad. So I've done those um, uh, in Milan uh, and I've taken students in Paris and Again, another Italy trip, but for an extended period of time for like three weeks. So I feel like that could be, that could be something you can rely on. You know, I can hopefully put everyone at ease with that. Ava, I'm sorry you can't also, have your also to, to back Please. to back up what what Daniela said too. Uh, my, myself and the program lead for the second okay. session are also very experienced travelers and have done this on many times. And th this is my second year working with CIE. I yes. was with, with the, the program in Rome last summer, so uh, I feel really confident um, about being able to anticipate what might happen. So, so here is Ava coming in with her question in the chat. Um, uh, Ava, you were asking about um, if we're going to be in the water. Yes, uh, it can be cool and unpredictable. I need to worry about bringing stuff like bathing suits. Um, definitely bring your bathing suits. Uh, you're going to be close to Pirita Beach, which is like 20 minutes walking from downtown uh, and the walk to the beach itself is beautiful. There is a beautiful old monastery that we're going to visit on the way there. So definitely bring your um, uh, and I've added that in the packing list too. We're going to be spending some time at the beach, of course, um, you know, play some volleyball. You can even go swimming not too far, but, you know, you can <laughs> you can have a little bit of fun. You can go there on your own time. Uh, I can't promise a lot of sun. But still, bring your sunscreen. You never know. Like I said, uh, it could be snow. It could be sun. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, Alan, I think, or was it Tyler? Alan, I, I think you had another question. Feel free to jump in anytime yeah, you want. I saw on the thing. Are we visiting the open air museum? Absolutely. And one of the groups, I don't know which group you're going to be in, but one of the groups is actually going to be there in the most fantastic time, which is Yanni Paev, uh, and it is um, Midsummer Day. It is the longest day in the summer, and Estonians really appreciate that because, you know, uh, sunsets during the winter are like 3 p.m. So, you know, the I always joke, it's like everyone's in hibernation. So in the summer, everyone comes alive and they have an actual festival that is going to be happening. Um, and we're going to go to the open air museum um, and you guys are going to come with me and we're going to eat some fantastic food. There's going to be folk dancing and singing and things like that. I mean, it's just going to be lots of fun. And by the way, if you're very curious to see all the other places we're going to go to, you can um, check out and follow that scavenger hunt blog that I made for you. And you can take a peek and see where we're going to go. I can't tell you specifically where every single visit is going to happen and when, but the night before I will be sending you guys um, here. I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be sending you just so that you can uh, you can see. I'll be sending you one of these guys. And it'll say Monday, June 17th, we're going to you're going to have breakfast. You're going to have a visit to the government of Estonia uh, directions, 15 minutes, walking, lunch, orientation, blah, 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 things like that. I'm also going to be adding an area in here. What not to forget, for example, it's a government visit. You have to bring your passport. You can't go inside of these like ministries and uh, U.S. embassies or like other important things like I you need you need an ad identification like I'll remind you of things like that I'll remind you of things like in Estonia you know it's like early is on time on time is late late is unacceptable <laughs> I'll tell you it's gonna be a sunny week bring your sunglasses you know it's like you know midnight sunset type of a thing right dress smart casual you know like leave your super flashy hoodies and crop tops or whatever behind <laughs> let's try to be presentable so um things like that so i'll be sending you one of this in your um in your uh, what's it called uh, whatsapp uh group the night before and they're gonna have little links and things like that and you can i'll follow up with here's your reading for the day i'll send you a link of the government of estonia in english if you want to be like super prepared 
and if you'd like to read so that you can ask intelligent and smart questions, because like I said, Estonians connect with people that in a meaningful way, they like conversation, they like deep things like let's talk, let's talk about the problem of the world, let's talk about climate change, let's talk about how we can resolve peace and things like that, like deep things. So maybe one thing that you can do is uh, do your nightly reading and I'll be sending you links. And if you're curious, it's not a homework or anything, but you know, something to stay educated and read about. So Another other questions, please. Is is there like a good app or program to learn any Estonian? Like I looked at there's Duolingo. so many. <laughs> uh, there's so many. Maybe that's something that I can include in the email. How about that? All right, I'm going to make a mental note and then Evelyn, you can also remind me <laughs> of my mental notes because I've had a long day. We went fishing this week um, in Sarema. And yes, it was a successful fishing trip, but it was not a successful trip back home. Like I said, I'm stuck. Um, I wasn't able to come back home on time. So yes, I can include that um, apps and Evelyn would maybe remind me of that in case I forget. And of course, you can reply back to my email and ask me and I can talk to you now. I know you haven't come here yet, but like I can still answer your questions via email too. So wonderful questions. Anything else, please let me know. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, um, Amber, you're absolutely right. You can definitely email also um, the high school study abroad CAE program like they they will be able to help you with lots of this kind of stuff because, you know, we're definitely, you know, busy like booking things and like working around. But, you know, that doesn't prevent me from answering an email like, yes, there are some apps you can learn. Yes, there are some links I can send you to learn some Estonian. Um, I'll be learning with you guys. I might be a little bit more advanced. Just kidding. <laughs> Just as <laughs> Daniela, there was a question. What kind of fish Please. did you catch? Uh, pike. They <laughs> caught, uh, I don't know, six or seven pikes. And um, they caught this one other one. And I was asking them, what's the, what kind of fish is it? And I, I don't think they knew what kind of fish. There was like, it's a fish for eating. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I think they don't know <laughs> the kind of fish it is. Um, but um, it seems like a very, this was from uh, today. So oh, I guess I can show you. Oh. This was from oh, today. Okay. Sorry. OK, yeah. This was today's fishing trip, and so uh, they were very successful. And yesterday, they also had a nice load. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, but um, I can't say that I'm a fishing girl. It was. <laughs> I need to be either out there doing something or I was uh, I had to like stay behind and I've never done fishing so I didn't know what just anyhow but yes it was a successful trip for them <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are questions I can answer for you how many of you have whatsapp by the way do you guys have whatsapp yes thumbs up yes okay cool yeah uh, we're gonna be using whatsapp and I will confirm your phone numbers with everyone before I add you to the group, make sure I don't, because we don't want to disturb your parents, obviously, right? And, you know, because it's going to be a lot of chatting. So, uh, but um, that's how I'm going to stay in touch with you every night before bed, right before bedtime. I'm going to send you your activity sheet for the next day, and I'm going to send you a link if you're curious to read about your upcoming visits to things. Um, for everyone who's really into hiking and like, I'm getting the vibe that everyone likes to do things. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, everyone is excited about like visits and hikes and things like that. We will also go to Nume Park. Um, it is, um, yeah, we would call it a cultural activity or something like that. Uh, we're not necessarily going to learn anything, maybe like a little bit of patience and perseverance, but uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of zip lining and uh, we're going to do like walking on ropes and things you do at an adventure park. I don't know, it's been a while. <laughs> I'll do it with you. But yes, I, I, don't, I don't quite know what. But yes, we, we will have lots of activities and fun things to do. Other questions, anyone else? Feel free to ask anything, literally whatever is in your mind. You guys are really deep into the conversation on the chat, but <laughs> I need a few more yes. brave people to to stay with me. Oh, here, Larkin has a question. Please go ahead. 
So, okay, I hope you can hear me. I have kind of a yes. silly question. What is the best food we should try while we're there? Evelyn, I'm gonna give you this one. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, uh, actually, I um, it, the, the question is of course a little bit like tricky because uh, what is the best uh, and what is the tradition and, and what is good is not the same. So, we, of course, we can recommend you uh, to try some traditional foods and actually we already have the list that we um, basically suggest you to, to try, but it, it may like a little bit uh, seem strange or that the taste is maybe not so something that you are used to, but yeah, we have mm -hmm. like uh, our traditional things also, uh, but you don't have to worry about them now because if you are here, we definitely will tell you there. what to try so so you will, your first you will have a dinner. chance to yeah your first you will have a chance to try exactly it's gonna definitely have a few tastes um and i would say like estonians eat seasonal food always fresh everything's fresh so if your stomachs are not used to fresh food like again um, pepto or whatever is the equivalent <laughs> bring some of that um, but yes, lots of fresh food. They rely on seasonal fruits and vegetables and things like that. It's beautifully grilled and integrated into the fish or whatever the staple of the day is. Um, uh, yeah, but Evelyn's right. There are some traditional foods that are um, not everyone's taste. Like, uh, what is it called with the lab and the fish? Come small on. fish? Ah, uh, what what do you mean? I mean the, kilo? Lay, the black lay yeah, kilo, yeah, exactly. Um kilo. it looks beautiful. It looks fantastic, but um and I had to eat it and try it in order to be accepted as a Estonian for my Estonian in laws here. Uh but it was I did not like it. Hopefully they can hear. <laughs> yes, but there are some things that we are gonna encourage you to try. You may or may not like them. Yes. And define this fresh, uh every Mm, I would fresh is um like uh tomatoes that smell like tomatoes you know things like that or like um I don't know I always use that example but um uh whatever is uh, seasonal in the like let's say veggies and things like that uh very Estonians are very conscious about pesticides and using any kind of chemicals in anything so it is going to be probably the best fresh food you're gonna have uh and I feel comfortable saying that because I have lived and traveled, uh, mostly lived in like different places in the world. And this is the best food I've had, fresh food for sure. I'm not talking about like delicacies, you know, different cuisines. I'm talking about just simply nice, good food. Uh, lots of vegetables. You can, uh, yes, definitely. Um, nothing's really raw here. like sushi style roll like no um everything's gonna be cooked and it's gonna be delicious with lots of different sauces uh, i feel like everyone you i will maybe include types of dishes you could ask for in that little um blog that i'm <laughs> doing for you guys as a little uh, i'm including the cafes and the restaurants you should try um and most of them will have websites like i said before so yes you will have language classes you'll have how many Evelyn? two yeah, you will have two language classes, three, sorry, um, and you will get uh, to actually, another... yeah, we have uh, we have one class when we uh, really try to uh, learn something and you, then you have two uh, practical classes when you try to use the language. So in, in total, we have three, but one is uh, more or less the, the theoretical uh, when we, we try to learn something and two practical when you can uh, really practice your your knowledge. <laughs> Small yeah. Knowledge yeah. Yes. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to send you this. I feel like there's a question about the packing list. Hmm. I was trying to send it in the chat, but again, it's OK. Just bear with me within the next few hours. I'm going to send you a list with the email and the information and all this kind of stuff of what you should pack. But um, you still have some time. I feel like everyone's ready to come already. <laughs> Other questions? Anything else we can answer? I definitely know who are the brave ones, so that's good. <laughs> but it's OK. I'm going to bring you out of your shell. I'm a very um, energetic 
and so nosy. I'm gonna definitely. The, the sure one question uh, that I, <laughs> sorry, I, the, the one question I just uh, see from the chat and, and I don't know whether I have still time to to reply by writing oh, is uh, what uh, <laughs> what is uh, defined as fresh? Uh, will majority of foods uh, be raw? No, no, yeah. no, no, not at all. I mean, it's it's still like cooked and everything, but mm -hmm. but fresh means uh, here that we catch the fish like uh, like today. Like it's fresh, but yeah, it's 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 fresh yeah, uh, fish, for example. <laughs> Yeah, but still we cook them or, or whatever do them with them. So it's not raw. So sometimes, yeah, of course, salads and, and these kind of things you can eat raw, but uh, it's, it doesn't mean, the fresh doesn't mean raw all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's still it's still like... No, like in my, my perspective of fresh, I meant only that um, if you're used to using, uh, excuse my French now, but junk food, right? Um, this is going to feel like a bit of a shock to your body because it's it's very good it's very fresh it's healthy it's your body's gonna be like what there's a lot of salad even the, the greens are cooked and you know the fish are fresh and it's like what's happening you know anyway but uh, that kind of food still super tasty um yes um, and um i think amber is uh she there there she is amber you're keeping us on track i have no idea uh, i lost track of time completely i have no idea what's next what's what i what i covered what i didn't cover and if i need something else to add please let me know i mean uh, i can also like uh, say that um you covered that at least uh, from my knowledge, everything that we had to cover. We still, I, I'm not, but I'm not sure whether I answered all the questions in chat, <laughs> but still, yes. um, uh, and the question just questions came, yeah, yeah, just one question came that where uh, where will be, uh, whether there will be uh, CIE stuff uh, available at the airport. Yes, we will be there, me and also Daniela. We will meet you in the airport. We will organize the bus for you to go to the uh, hotel. So you don't have to worry about a, a, anything regarding that. So we will be meeting Tallinn Airport. It's not the, uh, possible to, to meet mix uh, anything up because it's small airport really cozy nice airport and you just come uh, like uh, um, come uh, through this arrival arrivals hall and we will meet you there so, basically there's uh, only one door yeah. you can't yeah, miss us we exactly. can't miss you there's just one door <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah, yeah. you will meet us there yes you will meet um, us there but um, yeah i mean uh, i think that we have we have used uh, our time and and still as as uh, we said that if you still uh, have questions and I think you you may have Daniela will send you uh, lots of information uh, also and uh, if you after that if you read the questions and also uh, Daniela I think we should remind this uh, canvas course we we have there is also the information yeah. Yeah, so you guys are um, familiar with Canvas. Everyone has um, their courses you're following. You're added to the course, correct? So you have to make sure uh, to log in on Canvas and read through the information. There are a couple of steps for you to complete before you arrive. So, you know, forget about my packing list. That is something that's in addition to this is something that you absolutely have to do, OK, before you get on on the flight. And Amber, you're welcome to please interrupt me at any point, add on to this information. I'm still pretty new and I know that there's a lot of steps that they need to complete, but I can't quite know exactly the specifics of it. But I know that they definitely have to complete that before they arrive here. Um, and then, of course, once you arrive here, your instructor will tell you um, everything you need to do on site. But there is a portion that you need to complete before you come here. So log in on Canvas, see what's out there, see what you need to complete. The steps are pretty self-explanatory, but still, you know. I see the questions from the chat that uh, our students don't know what is Canvas. So, Amber, do you know whether the, the Canvas is also sent out the uh, information about Canvas? Yes, um, if you're not able to log in or you didn't receive an invitation for Canvas, um, go ahead and send us an email at hsabroad at cie.org. I'm going to put it in the chat now and then we can go ahead and get you set up on how to log into that course. Um, the deadline is June 1st and it's a pretty comprehensive course. So I would say do not wait to the last minute because there is a lot of really good information in there. Um, so I would take it um, different parts at a time. Um, 
because it's a lot of great information to take in. Um, it would be way too much at once, <laughs> but it, it's a lot of great details. And um, one other thing I will include about the Know Before You Go course is that there is a discussion forum. Um, so if you would like to know if there's any other students that are traveling from your area, um, if you'd like to connect a little bit better um, before meeting at the airport, that's a really good way to do it, to go on that discussion forum, share where you're from, some students share their contact info, so it's nice to to make a buddy before travels. So um, that's a question I get a lot. So I always encourage to check that discussion forum. Um, yeah, that's all I have to add. So I'm glad you mentioned uh, you know, before you go. <laughs> and Daniela, maybe need to cover. I'm Daniela, sorry. maybe only the contact information what was also provided uh, uh, in your uh, slides. You, you said that yes, maybe so you would like to open the I slides. I have a uh, PDF format with contact information, you know, apps to download like WhatsApp, things like that, packing list, you know, just random things, but also very important things. So I'm going to include all of that. And I won't forget, Tyler, I won't forget <laughs> the potential apps or websites. Uh, for learning Estonian before you even come, because there's nothing that makes an Estonian smile or break through their shell more than just saying Teromikust or Terohtust or something like that. <laughs> um, and they just light up and they're like, oh my God, you, you know, two words. They're so happy. It makes them happy. It is the best thing you can do. Other final questions, Amber, we're definitely good on time and information. We've covered everything. Yay. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing here in the chat. It looks like we covered everything here. Um, and in terms of time, we're good as well. So yeah. Perfect. OK, thank Yay. you guys well, so much. Yes, if you have any additional questions, uh, please reach out to HS Study Abroad. They probably will have more in-depth information. If you have any any questions specific about Tallinn um, and the program, then you can reach out to us because we probably will have more inside information on that. So just uh, think about the kind of question you have and who you should reach out to first. But um, anyhow, it was nice meeting you all, and um, I'm excited to see you all soon in Tallinn. Yay. Thank you so much from my side also, and I'm looking forward to meet you in Tallinn. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Da, 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 da. Okay, we'll have a few. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording if that's okay. Yes, please go yes, ahead. Yes, thank you okay. so much. <laughs> You're welcome.